a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to our man, George, in Newport, Richie. George, what's going on, brother? Hello, Tom. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing great. Yourself? Yeah, great. I've been following you for the last two years, listening to your show. Well, thank you very much. I, I appreciate it, George. All the hard work you've done for us over the years. Well, I really appreciate and, the call uh, and saying hi. My pleasure, Tom. Okay. I'll to your show. Thank you, man. Have a great one, a safe one. Day. Appreciate it, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup. You're watching the Tom O'Brien Show. I hope you all had a fantastic weekend. Uh, thank you to everyone who was able uh, to come out uh, to Tom's service. That was, uh, was very nice. Got to meet some of you as well. I thought that was very good. And even if you weren't able to make it, thank you so much for all the support you've been showing us online. Uh, it has been extraordinarily touching, especially the emails. Really deeply appreciate that. Uh, let's take a look at what we got going on. This you know, kind of mixed right now, at least. You have the composite down a little bit. I think you have some of the semiconductors off. It's kind of driving that down. The Dow Jones Industrial, though, still moving up, making all-time highs again today after pulling back slightly from that there. If the DXY about 0.55%, 105.52, so some really strong movement uh, to the upside there. Looking to get that 106 uh, kind of high. We had at least, uh, you know, what is that, around like April. Uh, crude oil getting sold off of about 3.17% on some kind of demand fears with it. Uh, the E-mini flat right now. Uh, we're still moving, making all-time highs again today, and then pull back slightly after. Now, gold and the metals in <laughs> kind of in general um, are getting cooked. Now, it's interesting to see silver, you know, not coming off as strongly. Usually the movement in, in gold, right, that you have that gets magnified uh, in silver, uh, we're off roughly the same. Actually, gold's down a little bit, off about 2.46% right now, trading at 2,628 on that Ford contract. Uh, some decent volume coming out of that. You have copper off about 1.51%, trading at $4.24 on that contract. And then the futures for silver are down at 2.14%, trading at 3077 I think there's a lot of interesting stuff going on here. Well, you know, one, there is so much exuberance in this in this market. And the metals weren't really doing it, right? So you kind of get that exit position, right? Maybe you get some people who are taking that money, get into something else. Uh, you know, but I'm, I'm also wondering, is this the first time that we're actually seeing Bitcoin meaningfully compete with things like gold, right? I mean, you have this conversation, Bitcoin hit $86,000. This is unbelievable. And it's been slumbering for, for quite a while, right? Um, this kind of conversation around a potential Bitcoin reserve, right? I mean, that is something that, you know, that store of value against, you know, inflation or whatever it may be, was traditionally what gold was for. So you have something in Bitcoin that is a store of value, or at least is being treated as such, and it moves a lot stronger uh, than, than gold has, at least to the upside you've been seeing. I mean, $86,000 is unreal. Whenever I heard that thing, like you might see a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin, I was like, "No way, dude!" But <laughs> it looks like it's getting to that point. I mean, even Dogecoin is out competing. This is a really wild market. I mean, you want to talk more about exuberance? Look at Tesla. I mean, I don't know if this is healthy, right? Like, this is massive volume keeps gapping up, gapping up, gapping up again. Made a high of three hundred fifty eight dollars and sixty four cents, trading up seven point six nine percent since the beginning of the session. Right now at 345.79, so a little bit off that that recent high there, but um, I mean, wow! You had tons of people lose money on Bitcoin shorts as well. Um, that's, this is the kind of reason I get spooked to short this stock. Yeah, hedge funds they they were shorting Tesla before they lost more than five billion dollars. Friday's close, yeah took an on-paper hit of at least $5.2 billion, according to Bloomberg. <clears throat> Nuts. You know, there's conversation as well. Um, I mean, you, you have Rivian up, too. It, it looks like that maybe Trump isn't going to repeal as many kind of investments in green energy that the Biden administration had made. I mean, we're not up, like, in the same way. Obviously, Tesla isn't Rivian, 
I mean, we're trading up 4.63%, finally out of those doldrums within the $10 range, right? You know, slipping below that <clears throat> multiple times here. And uh, you're trading up 4.67%. I think Lucid is roaring today. Yeah, up 7.24%. It, it's unbelievable. Disney cracking 100. We have earnings this week, I believe, before the bell on Thursday. So you have a little bit of drive on that. But, you know, now we're getting into stuff. We're getting into prices. We're getting into high volume movements on, you know, no substance with such exuberance that it makes me a little bit cautious now. Like, do we see a pullback from this level? I mean, kind of makes sense, right? You do have healthy volume coming into pounds here, right? Comparatively speaking, making all time highs of $62. Trading at 60.40 right now, up 3.4%. I think you had Ionic kind of come off a little bit today. Of course, I got out of that, but. I mean, this market is just roaring. Yeah, so Ionic's off about 5% today, but still, you would be profitable if you bought at the levels we were, we were talking about with it. You have earnings this week. We have Rocket Lab coming up. And I mean, you know, again, I think it's 12% right now at $15.13. This is a decent volume compared to what it usually trades at, right? Um, obviously, you have some big movements here going to that volume, but we're just so high. It looks like they, if you look at the rest of the industry, I mean, it looks like they might beat you know all their competitors kind of beat which is pretty nuts the last kind of report in this area let's see yeah Ducom delivered a year-on-year -year revenue growth of 2.6 percent that's beating analyst expectations of a loss Curtis Wright revenues up 10.3 percent that beats you know estimates by nearly five percent so you know we might see some big movement here you just have the market itself just not even caring right like hey let's just throw stuff in especially around earnings it's kind of interesting uh, i was looking at their balance sheet as well uh, if i can pull this up their, their revenues actually are climbing you know pretty decently um they nearly doubled revenues from you know june 30th right from you know i'm, I'm comparing 2024 to 2023 their cost of revenues have not doubled which is pretty solid. Operating loss has gotten better. They have more cash. I mean, yeah. So cash equivalents from June 30th, of course, I'm looking at their last quarterly versus December 31st, 2023. You know, you have cash and cash equivalents in December, you know, end of last year at 162 million. Now they're sitting with 340 million. Their total assets have blown up. Their liabilities their current liabilities, I guess I could say, have not really exploded in any meaningful way, uh, but the total liabilities have mainly from convertible senior notes. I mean, it's something to keep in mind, but I mean, this Rocket Lab company seems to be in a good spot. You know, you have earnings after the belt today. I might get in, you know, just to play the earnings, um, you know, during one of the breaks here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they're doing well. You have Cisco coming up, which I'm very hyped about. We could talk a little bit about that. I'm gonna have Steve Rhodes on next, and then we're also gonna have Basil Chapman on halfway through, and then we're gonna get to Cisco and some of the other things we have earnings looking forward to. Uh, so stay right there, we'll be right back. We got a great uh, rest of the show for you guys. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. 
Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Every Monday, we are joined by the man, Steve Rhodes. Steve Rhodes is the author of The Mastering Probability Newsletter, fantastic newsletter you've heard me speak endlessly about. And then he is also the host of The Trader's Edge on at 11 a.m. Eastern Time every day that the market is open right here on Tiger Financial News Network. Steve, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Jacob. How about yourself today? Doing well. Steve, it was, it was good to meet you this weekend. It was good to see yeah. you at the, uh, the celebration of life. And yeah, it was fantastic. No, same here. It was, uh, I think, it, uh, was a, it was a beautiful ceremony, uh, for sure. You know, out at the National Cemetery, if folks have never been to the National Cemetery, they, they just simply put on a, a really wonderful service out there. They do. So well attended. They you do. know, I think Tom would be, he'd be like, oh, my God. He'd be elated. Um, Absolutely. Right? I mean, we had hundreds of cars there, it seemed like. It was unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> you know, so just, uh, you know, it just shows you how many people uh, Tom has, you know, seriously touched yeah, uh, for sure. You know, and then the uh, celebration of life party afterwards, you know, uh, just just everybody that's really been in uh, Tom's life for everybody that could get down for it. So it's great to see you there as well. Yeah. And, um, um, it, it, and so normally I have something prepared. But sure. and and, you know, those folks that listen to my show, as you said, it's on 11 o'clock. You know, I off I almost every day will say that everything in life is happening for us, um, not to us. And, and I absolutely live by that principle. Uh, where I always have struggled with that is in death, because how can somebody's death really be happening for us right you know what i mean so but because i believe in that like when david white passed away yes uh, when he passed away i immediately said okay i'm gonna get make sure that my my life is my health i should say not my life but my health you know is in good order and so i i went on a, a one meal a day uh, diet got rid of a bunch of uh, got rid of all the medications i was taking it was really wonderful until i was struggling this year june to september with some other you know rsv and covid and all that kind of stuff so sure. uh, the the first thing i'll do with regard to tom's uh, passing is uh, just simply go out there get everything checked you know everything possible checked out there just to, if there is a problem we want to catch it early so Absolutely. uh you know so that's been that's been my vote motivation i just got back from an echo scan uh for my cardiologist oh, yeah. and i wasn't sure if i was going to be back in time to do a show so i didn't get the normal presentation that i would do done but that doesn't mean we're not going to learn some things out here right so uh, if we can yeah, if we can let's get to it um and what i want to start with is i'm going to start with the weekly time frame charts i showed this this morning uh during today's show and this is really important because people are trying to understand is the move real when is it going to peter out all those kinds of things and what's really important here is i'm just a technical trader sure. and you know there's still no software that i know of that i can click on a candle and know 
what the highlights of the day were, what geopolitical events might have been taking, uh, uh, take, you know, taking place. And as I've gone through charts uh, that have Dow data goes back to the 1860s, the patterns just, they're there and they work. Um, they they also fail, but the majority of the time, the patterns that I use will work. And one of those patterns, I, there's two patterns here I'll refer to. One's a TD9 count, and the other's a Rosemont Dominicator signal. Both the the uh, the uh, Dow Cash, we, we're looking at the weekly indices. We're looking at the cash indices. And on the trading week of October 18th, uh, the TD9 count pattern was uh, confirmed. And the following week, a Rosemont Dominicator pattern. Those have been in place until last week. And those were negated and taken out. When you negate those patterns in really short order out there, with just a couple weeks' time. It tells us about a strong upward momentum move. That's for the Dow. If we take a look at the S&P 500, it also negated the same two patterns out there. Again, it did that last week. What the market, what the signals, what the technicals are telling us, whether we want to believe them or not, I do believe them, is that price wants to move higher. That doesn't mean we don't have jostling back and forth. Heck, we think we opened up the market today and, uh, and uh, futures may have been down or some of the futures were down. Uh, the Russell 2000 has negated topping signals. The only pattern that has Hasn't really the only instrument I should say that hasn't negated a topping signal is the semiconductor index, mm -hmm. and it has me scratching my head just a little bit out here. We haven't even gotten back to its highs out there, so it's just a. But other than the semis out there, all of the other indices have negated really significant uh, topping patterns, and in many instances, price never even really got back to a level of support to uh, test and reject that. So that's the first thing that I wanted to share with folks. Now the question is, where might be price going? I'm just going to focus on the uh, Dow. I'm going to switch back to my black background screen. So you need to be my auditor. Make sure that's what shows up. Because <laughs> oftentimes, <laughs> oftentimes I think I'm doing that. I'm talking about that. And then boom, you know, people are saying, well, that's nice, Stevie. But, you know, show me the screen. Now, here's the screen. We're going to take a look. Well, OK, so this is one thing we're going to take a look at. Yep. And that is how is the Dow trading in major currencies? And that's what this chart does. So we know we're at a new all-time high today in terms of dollars. But guess what? We're in terms – we're at new all-time highs today in terms of every major currency. When I say major currency, I'm referring to euros, yen, Australian dollars, Swedish krona, Great British pound, Swiss franc, Chinese yuan, and a Canadian loonie. Real bull markets, and this is important, so we just took a look at weekly charts that had negated their signals out there. The real bull markets are when an instrument that you're trading is moving higher in every major currency. You know, maybe you've got a cousin Jacob over in uh, in Japan. They're thinking in terms of yen, not right. really thinking in terms of dollars. Maybe you've got a, another relative that's over in Europe. They're thinking in terms of either euros or pounds uh, out there. And so when these are moving all at uh, in the same direction at new all-time highs, it tells you that this is a very strong bull market. Now, where is it that uh, the Dow might be headed to? I'm going to pull out a chart here. This is for the Dow. This is a monthly Time frame. So I'm giving you a bigger picture. I'm not saying this is headed there tomorrow. First, I've drawn in here an A to B equals CD pattern, you know, brought to us by Tom, Larry Pesavento, H.M. Gartley. The one to one monthly A to B equals CD pattern inside the Dow will get us up to the 47,399 level. If somebody's asking me, is that a projection? Absolutely, it's a projection. Now, I can't guarantee it's going to get there, but that's the projection of the A to B equals CD pattern. These horizontal lines on my screen, those are referred to as horizontal trading ranges. They're established by identifying the largest number of opens or closes that occur at a price level. Once you identify, and I have this all electronically set up, and once you figure out where the first largest number of of incidents are and then the second, that gives you your horizontal trading range. And once you have that dollar value, it just simply is added to the upside or to the downside. And they oftentimes act as magnets. Uh, I know you're gonna have Basil on, he'll talk about magnets, I'm sure. Well, the next magnet to the upside is uh, 46,367. So I would say the Dow is likely headed to 46,367 to 47,399. That doesn't mean there won't be any pit stops out there, but I just want to be able to give folks a take a look at that. Now, you mentioned the US dollar index. We take a look at the U.S. dollar index. It's trading up against this a weekly chart, a monthly chart on the lower left out here. And you can see we're up against where other swing, where we've gotten to before. And that's at the 105.57 level. So even though it's a monthly time frame chart, it really is worth paying attention to out there. Um, I also wanted to take a look at gold. So so as we close out the show, I'm going to switch back to my other screens out there. Sure. Again, you get out of me, make sure we see some white screens out here. Uh, so I'll have those up momentarily. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go take a look at uh, gold. And we're going to do this. Um, how am I going to do this? I'm going to do this this way. Mm. 
shoot. I, what I'm going to what I want to share with folks is, and I didn't show the weekly time frame for gold. I should have, and the reason that I should have is because what gold did today is it got back to the bottom of its weekly profile. The number of that weekly profile is 261840. Our low today 261710. Uh, uh, and as long as that weekly profile holds of 2618 we've likely formed at least a short-term bottom today is going to be bar number eight of a td9 count pattern out there and that says we likely get a confirmed td9 count pattern tomorrow a completed pattern on wednesday now when we get the daily time frame that says we might have a bottom we look to the intraday charts out here we look for bottom patterns we've got them all across the board except for the five hour time frame chart now if folks turn into my show tomorrow which is normally at 11 but i'll be recording from eight to nine i'll follow back up on gold and the td9 count pattern it's really worth knowing out there so that's all i've got for you today jacob i uh, hope that helped Steve, and uh thank you so much we'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m all right or uh, well at 8 a.m tomorrow 8, 8 a.m tomorrow see you then okay. steve thanks jacob take care folks stay there we'll be right back Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading. Trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. 
Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, everyone. Man, this is like, no, this market is crazy. These earnings coming up. I was looking at some more at Rocket Lab and everything. I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to decide by the end of this next break. But let's go over to what matters more than Jacob's Trades, which is uh, our guest, Basil Chapman. Now, you might be asking, well, Jacob, it's Monday. Why on earth is Basil Chapman on? Well, that's because we're still going to have him on Tuesday, which we all love having him on there. That's because Basil is having, uh, having a subscriber webinar Thursday, November 14th. That is this Thursday, and that is only going to be subscribers to his opening call newsletter is right here in the Discord server. Now, if you have never subscribed to Basil's opening call newsletter, I'd strongly recommend it. I've not heard a single person ever have anything bad to say, only glowing results, especially when I recommend it to them uh, if they call in uh, to the office. Now, I will say that if it's your first time, you do get a 30-day money-back guarantee. For whatever reason, it just doesn't work out for you, so it is risk-free, but we really bet that it is going to work out for you, especially with this new webinar. It is going to be, again, this Thursday, November 14th, 4 o'clock to 5.30 p.m. Eastern time, so right after that day there. You had sector rotations, going to continue his new group's rally. Former out-of-favor big losers are becoming winners. Amazing weekly time frames to gauge intermediate-term trends. Excuse me, analyzing weekly time frames. Demonstrating the critical 9 by 14 moving average crossover, so much more. Chapman Wave technical tools. You got to get in there if you've never been a part of a Basil subscriber webinar. Well, it is extraordinarily informative. And additionally, when you're a subscriber to the opening call newsletter, you get access to all of his other webinars, which is just such a phenomenal deal. Basil Chapman, how are you doing? Hi, Jacob. How are you? Doing well. It's good to have you on. I'm glad we could uh, hear a little bit from you today. I know there's a lot of interesting stuff moving. Semiconductors are acting a little strange. I know that can sometimes be a bellwether for you. And I know we've been looking at the Dow recently. We've been coming on. Interested to hear what you're looking at right now. So there are a couple of things that I wanted to just uh, review because in, in, in July when I did my last webinar, I was looking also at sectors and stocks and what what was underperforming and what could overperform in the next uh, quarter or so. And so we were preparing, and that's what we did. And we've been doing the same thing now. And as I've been saying to uh, on my show at 10 o'clock, the Tiger Technicians Hour, uh, this is a good time to sign up because I'm not waiting until Thursday after the webinar to start implementing these whatever is appropriate right now that's what we're going for because this is a really important you can see this down well we also you can see we've got a it says long right here this is the low of october of 2022 20, uh, we're still long that position we long uh, with uh, three times long as well although you're never supposed to do that we've kept that long position and we have trading longs as well whenever we can with the dow i love the action of the dow it's just so appropriate appropriate at this particular time for this particular phase. So I was talking to you the other day, and this is exactly what the type of thing that I'll be going through is to show how chart patterns, um, whether or not it's like a fractal of human nature, it's like a little, it's like a little chart formation mm -hmm. that forms over any time period, whether it's a one minute chart, whether it's a monthly chart, and it either expands or contracts, but it has that same uh, integral pattern so you remember i was talking to you last week and i said the iyt which is the uh, the iShares transportation average etf was breaking out in a pattern that is traditionally called the cup and handle i have another pattern called the cup and ladle that's i love that it's a way more powerful pattern but the cup and handle if you don't recognize as the hand the little small handle is turning up it, it's already getting a little late to get into that position. So I said, patterns repeat over and over, and once they form, they form in unlikely neighbors. In other words, who would have thought that the IYT would have any semblance to uh, Bitcoin? But look at this, chart on the right is the monthly. Look at this, cup and handle. So um, we went along the um, IBIT, that's the iShares, of the of Bitcoin, I spoke to you about it. That was about a, a week or so ago, and we've had the spectacular move to the upside with Bitcoin at all-time highs, and it was based on this particular pattern, the or the one that I like least of all, unless you appropriately uh, get into it. And you can see this 
cup pattern right here in BTC is the handle. So we are in IBIT and then subscribe says, wait a minute, uh, where's the pattern? Well, the pattern's missing. This is a derivative of the iShares, the iShares Bitcoin Trust only came as an IPO uh, earlier this year. So you've got the part of the handle that really counts. So we are lucky. We 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 were long from over there. Look where it is right now at an all time time high. Well, of course it's an IPO. I'm not talking about the Bitcoin I, I as an uh, all time high. So that was one relationship, and this is the kind of relationship that I'm going to be talking about coming up. Over, in fact, I've started doing it, but I'll. I'll talk about it in greater detail when I do the uh, when I do the webinar on Thursday. Now here's another one. I've been saying that the S and P, the S and P, the 500 has been leading and making all time highs, but the IWM, that relationship of the uh, 500 S and P 500 to the Russell 2000, just like silver and gold, where they chased one another up, and then where they both made highs, they came tumbling down. So I'm anticipating we're going to see the same relationship here with the IWM that's going to go to its all-time high of 244.46. So we've been long the um, IWM, the Russell 2000, from the low that was made right in August, the very next day after the low at 196.60, we went long at 203. We've had a number of positions. So it's it's doing exactly what we were looking at. But wait a minute. Look, he has this cup formation. So I'm anticipating that it could be a cup. It starts to storm when it gets close to the uh, 244, 246 say, area. And then maybe it makes a handle. And that's what we'll be following. So I, this is the relationship that I'm looking at in the different sectors and uh, what we can look at in terms of how other areas can follow once the chart pattern is formed. So um, that was one of them. Then I was also talking to you about in the chat where we're always looking for a peak D. Uh, that's the fourth highest peak. Well, I had spoken to you a number, for a number of weeks about Solventum Healthcare. Uh -huh. And we've been long for quite some time now, since the 57s were way back over there in the daily chart. You can see that was in August. And then we took a little bit off when it got to the 73.40 area, the high. It pulled back and we added another, kept that now as a core and had a trading position saying, we want to see it go to a leg D. Well, it went to 76.05 about three weeks ago, pulled back. And yesterday I said, if it goes above 76.05, Take something off the trading position because that'll be leg D. And lo and behold, it got earnings and it had the earnings. It went to 77, uh, into the 77s. We took some profit and now it's pulled back. So these are the relationships that I'm going to be looking at. But most importantly, um, it's, you know, and we also spoke about Hood. You remember Robin Hood? Absolutely. And I said there's a relationship there of, of Bitcoin. To uh, and gold, and I think Bitcoin is going to be the favorite for Robin Hood. Is he has Robin Hood at a, at a, a recovery high in the 36s? We're in at 16, so we've got 100% profit. Basil, thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., then also on Thursday at 4 o'clock Eastern Time. Thank you very much, Jacob. Oh, stay right there. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully.
Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shupi. You're watching the Tom O'Brien Show. We were just joined by both Steve Rhodes and Basil Chapman. Uh, Basil Chapman, again, has that subscriber-only webinar that's going to be from 4 o'clock to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Just, you know, I've sat through a bunch of these over the few years that I've worked here, and they're just, like... They're great every time, right? Puts things on the radar that maybe you're not even aware of. Obviously, Basil has so many years of trading experience. Um, and it just, you know, it's it's fantastic. I strongly recommend checking it out. Again, that's going to be November 14th. That's this Thursday. And if you can't make it that time, that's not a big deal. We're going to record this thing, have it uploaded for you very shortly after. So you can watch it over the weekend or even Friday. Um, just it. It works for you, you know, it really does. So go ahead and check that out. Again, that's the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman. All right, let's talk about Cisco. This I really feel kind of bullish on. Um, not just feel, I think there's a lot of like fundamental changes going on here in the market. You, you've had this year and really like a year and a half of just slowing spending on, you know, on networking, on cybersecurity, which you know my opinion on that. I think that's silly um, because that will be the most, one of the most important industries going forward is, is cybersecurity and spending on that. It's just going to take time for some of these new C-suite executives who get in to have, you know, I'm going to call it, I mean, really, I, I think the, you know, CEOs of the future, you know, the past, it's like what, you had your finance guys and you go into your lawyers who are running it. And uh, it's going to be people with IT backgrounds going forward because it's just going to be so necessary as we keep digitalizing everything. And then additionally, uh, with the introduction of AI and it actually ramping up in a way that can generate profits. And so you've had a small contraction since about 2023, especially throughout this year. You know, I'm looking at Juniper, right? They had their uh, quarter ending in September. This was released uh, on Halloween, so October 31st. You know... The net revenues were down off 1.3% over the year, but that beat analyst expectations, right? You had net revenues at the campus and branch, so that was for hardware maintenance. Uh, you had the campus branch off about 16.5%, but again, that did beat estimates. Net revenues in data centers, now, this is what we're looking at regarding, you know, really Juniper to an extent, but then Cisco, okay? It's this build out in the data centers that are gonna be hyping up this AI, that are gonna be supporting it, uh, the, the expansion that we're going to see in this kind of stuff is going to be like unreal almost. So, and Cisco is going to have a piece of that. I mean, they, they really will, right? Um, so for the data center revenues, again, for Juniper, which is a competitor, you had 244.6 million compared to the 171 average estimate. That's a 43.9% change year over year. What else are we looking at? Revenue, the services was unchanged for Juniper, really. Uh, and then their cloud, right? The revenue from cloud is up 29.7%. 
Cisco, I think, can dominate very heavily, uh, more so than Juniper currently. You take a look, I'm gonna pull over, this is their fourth quarter earnings that they had released, August 14th. Product order growth of 14% year over year. That's up 6% excluding Splunk. So this is really why they got kind of cooked, I think, um, during this report, is their acquisition of Splunk just really hit them pretty hard. Additionally, I, I think one thing to, to keep in mind as well, I believe they're acquiring another company. I don't know if that's gone through this quarter. Uh, I should look that up before. I definitely will before their earnings on Thursday. Um, but that's something to keep in mind as well that could affect you know revenue, obviously EPS. But this recovery within networking through the data center expansion and the adoption of AI is going to benefit Cisco heavily, right? So they made a deal with, this is again on August 27th, right? And so this before this, or excuse me, after this earnings, we're gonna get these like sweet slick reports on this. You have some deal with AI here, which is, excuse me, with NVIDIA, which is massive, these hyperfabric uh, AI clusters. So in collaboration with NVIDIA, um, to basically develop these things, a new enterprise ready infrastructure solution to scale generative AI workloads. This is massive full stack solution delivers AI scale performance with 800 G ethernet, unreal Cisco cloud management to simplify all phases of operation, obviously agility. They, this is of course they're writing. Uh, this is from Cisco. So they had nice flowery language for all of us out there. Um, but this expansion into AI and kind of a getting into the head, especially with a company like Nvidia is awesome. Again, this is a pre-trained customizable AI workflows. This is really fantastic. This is where all the money uh, gets made. And if Cisco is right at the heart of it, you know, we like to see that. We like to see that. They're expanding partnership with uh, NFL that's protecting NFL national games. I think there's some pretty sweet stuff going on with Cisco going forward. So I'm gonna take a closer look before we get to earnings. I think the earnings aren't today, are they? Yeah, okay. This is on Wednesday, excuse me. So after trading on Wednesday. Um, but keep your eye out for that. Up 1.15% right now. I think Cisco benefits very heavily from that. We can also talk about stock that could have benefited, but decided uh, to not do that at all, which is going to be SMCI. So they, you know, we've been speaking about these guys pretty consistently, right? Let's pull this up here. They have until November 16th to get their act together and not get delisted from the NASDAQ. You're off 5.65% right now. They have earnings tomorrow after market. I can imagine that there's gonna be contraction here, right? And I'm not just saying that, right? But there's some reports going on that they dropped a huge, they dropped the ball basically on a huge order here uh, for these GB200 trips, that's NVIDIA's. Uh, another Ta Taiwanese company got that, these guys are headquartered in, um, excuse me, San Jose, I believe. Um, but you had a Taiwanese company pick up the ball on that. It seems like they've had contracting orders being filled here. And can we even really trust what they've been saying in the past? It's, it's very hard. Now, in the event that for whatever reason, it's not as bad as, you know, kind of anticipated, like they get these earnings out and everything's good, or, and they're able to do this by November 16th, this stock has the potential to like moon. Right, but this is like, as I was saying in the demo earlier, this is like a super cowboy play. You know, there is a really solid chance that they don't have everything squared away by November 16th. We have five days until this is, you know, required of them. And uh, I'm just suspect of it. You know, this can go right back to where it was trading, you know, in this kind of area here before the news came out, right? Before Heisenberg came out and, or excuse me, Hindenburg came out and had their short report on it. But I'm, I'm following the developments closely because it, it would be fun just to like, you know, buy calls on it and be like, hey, look at me. You know, we actually ended up making a bunch of money on it. But I just, I, th I think stuff is kind of sketchy over them. But let's see what Dell is doing. Because if Dell is getting some of this share, you can see some of the sentiment then through it. Because these are the main competitors. I'm 3.21% today. The problem with SMCI is that it really, it, the, I mean, their stuff works. You know, this, is like a, this isn't a leadership issue. You know, of course, you can get in as well. <clears throat> in the, you know, kind of concept or uh, the potential uh, that they get purchased out or bought out, but I, I don't know who does that. Is it Dell that does it? I, I, you know, I'm not sure. I don't think NVIDIA does that, um, but, you know, 
we'll see what happens. Obviously, the quarterlies are going to be very important uh, for everyone just to kind of see where they're at and whether or not, you know, they can be able to pay NVIDIA, you know, whether or not they have enough cash to stay around. That's one problem. And then, of course, the NASDAQ delisting is a massive issue. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, everyone. Jacob Shoop, you're watching the Tom O'Brien Show. We just have a short segment. Take a look at Taiwan Semiconductor off about 3.5% right now. Uh, some of the big news kind of coming out from this is that the country of Taiwan is now forbidding. It is verboten for TSMC to manufacture the two nanometer chips in foreign lands, which becomes an issue for TSM in light of America trying to bring semiconductor manufacturing uh, to its lands and really only wanting to buy American made, right? I mean, you're getting this weird kind of, uh, you know, micro, you know, I don't want to say like, it's not nationalizing, obviously, right? But they want this domestication, essentially, of some of these really high tech uh, kind of uh, technologies, essentially. Um, so this, you know, 
essentially <laughs> poses a big issue for TSM, right? So they've obviously gotten a bunch of money from the CHIPS Act, which is huge. They're building out in Arizona, which is actually hyper-efficient compared to what they're doing, or excuse me, more efficient than what they're doing in uh, Taiwan itself. I don't know if there's the ability for TSMC to split off and have like truly two different companies and, and have the US and both Taiwan uh, kind of accept that. This of course is, you know, a pretty big bargaining strat, I would say for Taiwan, right? I mean, you had some conversation around the president elect saying, hey, it doesn't really matter. You know, Taiwan, Taiwan, whatever. Maybe this is some way for Taiwan to be like, hey, you know what, if you're gonna say that and leave us at risk of an invasion from the mainland, uh, then we're not going to allow you to, uh, you know, have our company build our cutting edge chips in your country. Massive issues. Now, let's say that does come to pass and there's some weird kind of war with it. Maybe Intel benefits from that in some capacity in the way that they're the only ones who can accept money. <laughs> so, interesting to see a lot of uh, strange developments coming on. This is going to be a strange end of the year, no doubt. Folks, Thank you so much for joining me today. Make sure to check out those newsletters from the hosts that we had on today. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. for Tommy O'Brien and the morning market kickoff. Take care.